Walking Blind is hosted by overly emotional dudes who overthink and overanalyze everything. Nothing the hosts say should be taken as medical advice or opinion. They're not professionals, and they're about to make that very clear. So just kick back and hang with them, because you've earned it. Now cue that music. You intro it this week. All right. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Walking Blind Podcast. I hope everyone had a good holiday weekend. Yeah. It is our... I'm just your hype man. Yeah. I don't know what episode this is. Episode seven. Episode seven. And uh, I, we're going to just go into a lot more uh, more questions today. No guests today. Um. And yeah, so I think it should be pretty, I think it should be a fun, a fun, uh, fun episode. You're so professional compared to me, you know, what? there's, there's something professional about the way you speak and the way you talk and there's something so <laughs> r- rough and, and <laughs> rugged about the way I speak. Every time you talk, it's so polite. It's so like, hello, my name is Michael Perez. Welcome to the Walking Blind Podcast. And I'm like, what's up, dudes? <laughs> uh. I I don't even know what to say to that. It's all right. We have a good dynamic. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I was raised good. I was raised good. I was raised good. Uh, first things first, um, I think we need to jump into our normal mental health check, right? Yes. So why don't you start? Where are you at? So me- mentally, I feel, I feel all right. I, feel, I actually feel like mentally rested. Okay. That felt like um, even with the holiday stuff going on, um, like work wasn't too terribly crazy this week, and um, yeah, I've just been able to kind of kind of relax, which is nice. Uh, Health wise, I think I might be coming down with something. So. Oh man, do you have the vid? I, I mean, if this is it, I'm gonna be very disappointed because. <laughs> All it is is like I've just felt like tired and then a little bit of a runny nose. Again, so I think here. I think there's a, you're you've put yourself through a lot lately. Like your body is just yeah. You've been working, you've been working late shifts. You've been working overnights. You've been, you know, picking up the extra shifts and extra hours and all of that. Like really takes a toll on on you. So I think your body is just kind of adjusting because it's not it's something that you've ne- really never to do before. Yeah. You know. I, my body straight gave up last week. Like I wasn't even, it, I didn't even, it wasn't like I felt sick or anything. But I just, when I finished my shift on Tuesday, I think it was, I basically slept all Tuesday. And then Wednesday I did the same thing. I was just so extremely tired. My body just like shut off. It was weird. Yeah. But I feel like I'm slowly building back up. But uh, yeah. How was, how was, where were you at mentally? you know i'm torn um because part of me is like we've i've kind of like even just today i've kind of announced some cool stuff today uh we got a new single coming out for the solo hip-hop stuff (laughs) weird weird flex uh also we announced a little uh riverside home show at the same place that Burner State played a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. which should be very interesting to see my band play there because it's a very, <laughs> very, very different vibe and dynamic. Oh, I want to be there. Um, <clears throat> so we announced a home show with uh, its Torture Culture, uh, Iron Rule, and Harsh Reality. Cool. It's just a three-band little tiny bar gig that's just going to be really fun because we have I haven't I haven't played a show in the Inland Empire in almost 10 years dang so for me that's just kind of cool what what was the last inland empire show um well if you don't count any of like the rap stuff it was a creative void show and it was like our last show as a band 
this had to be nine years ago or nine years ago something like that so yeah it's a while ago wildness um but yeah so that that's cool but then i'm also kind of like still in that weird holiday funk, funk. <laughs> <laughs> like i dude there was a huge part of me that just did not want to go and like hang out with my family on christmas day not that i didn't want to see any of them i love all of them but i was just kind of like i'd really like to just stay home and catch up on the witcher you know <laughs> like so i don't know I just, it's just a weird it's a weird feeling um and I get, I mean, you know, other, I know that other people feel like this around the holidays, um, you know, and it's just finding a way to, to deal with that, that holiday funk because it's not festive and cheery for everybody. Right. You know, so. Do you um, have any, uh, do you have any like traditions you like to do? <laughs> uh, not really. <laughs> There's no, there's no real tra traditions <laughs> that we, uh, that we speak of. Um, that's good. That's fair. You know, like I, I, I thought about this the other day because somebody was asking me, um, they were saying that they had decorated their house for Christmas and like, Oh, well, like, are you putting up decorations? And I was like, no. And they're like, well, are you, do you at least like have like, do you have like lights outside? And I was like, no. <laughs> and they're like well what about a tree do you have a tree i was like no i mean to me i guess like i don't really care for it like if i put up a tree i'm gonna feel obligated to put presents underneath the tree and then <laughs> the dogs are gonna tear open the presents and then you know that's kind of that's that but there's nobody that comes here to see the tree to me i feel like you set that up for other people All right you know, but your mom is the most extra and festive person in the universe. So you already have a winter wonderland at your house. You don't need to see it when you come here. It's it's uh my <clears throat> maybe I'll take a picture and we can edit edit it edit oh, it's, it in somehow. It's phenomenal. Um, yeah, my mom my mom is just extra with everything. She's very everything. festive, very festive. Everything. Which, um, by the way, Martha, thank you for the tacos last week. Uh, <laughs> um, they were delicious. <laughs> she said Martin and I we just stopped by the house to pick up I think just to pick up like lighting and stuff for the last week's uh podcast and then um she's like Did you guys eat? I'm like, uh I guess we can eat. So we Martin and I ate at my house and then my mom packed up this like crazy little setup for Mike. She it was tacos. It was like five tacos, two tamales, Small tacos. rice and beans on on another plate. It was great. Yeah. It was great. But yeah. So maybe, yeah. I'll, I'll just see if I can, I'll get a picture of my my house. <laughs> so in your house, how long do the Christmas decorations stay up? Like, do you... Oh, man. I think... Do they I stay up be, through New Year's? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would be shocked. I feel like we really start to take them down, or at least help, help them take them down, uh, around, like, before, before uh, Valentine's Day. <laughs> All the way into February? Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Like January for sure. Like I think maybe like she'll start taking some stuff down and just keep like a winter theme. That's the other thing too. My mom has themes. Yeah. Like all year. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's like there's an actual holiday tied to it. She has themes. Which you know, like and I I could say I enjoy going to your house and seeing all the themes. I'm like, oh, this is very cool. I just don't do it at my own house. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe I guess it just takes like some level of effort that I just don't feel like putting in. Well, or think, just me. I think also too. I mean, yeah, like my mom, my mom is just like a just an entertainer. She wants to entertain. She wants to have parties at her house and stuff. And then now, like we have, I have two nieces, and they're um, actually my my uh, youngest turns four tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So. Happy birthday. Happy. <clears throat> um. And so, yeah, my nieces are going to be four and six. And so they like love, they love it. They love the decorations. And stuff. So that's just like an added, um, I don't know, more motivation for my mom to be just more over the top. Yeah. But I, I, I get that. If there was a kid around, you know, or there was, there was somebody that would appreciate it, I would go make the effort to, you know, yeah, make things look cool, make things look nice. But, 
yeah, I just, I guess I don't feel like doing it for myself. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. My, yesterday, I, uh, actually yesterday I had Christmas, uh, like kind of like more like Christmas with my family because on actual Christmas I had to work and, uh, and so, and my parents, um, they had, they had gone to Palm Springs for a little bit. So we, on actual Christmas day, we didn't really do too much. So yesterday, which was Sunday 26th is when I went out to my brothers and we kind of had more of like a Christmas, like dinner, watch movies together, stuff kind of thing. And as we were leaving, my, <laughs> my dad was like looking at my, my brother's house and looking at his lights and he's like, Hmm. Yeah. They're not really straight. Like a wave, you have like a wavy thing going on. <laughs> And then my brother's like, yeah, I think so. Wait, so so is your dad in on the on the decor as well? Uh, or has he just been conditioned by Martha to <laughs> notice? A little bit of both, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, because in our, like our front yard, we don't really have. I'm saying this, and we I'm, I'm, we probably do have a bunch of stuff. It's not very many like things. My mom has like like we're the house with like blow up things in the front. Yeah. So. Fair. Yeah. So like. Yeah, but it helps with that, I guess. But we don't we don't really like put up lights. Like, there's no like. I can't remember the last we did that like years ago, but I, but I don't know. I mean, it, it it was enough to like notice that my brother's house, like, <laughs> you get yeah. It was they're a little, they weren't very straight. Does Does Mario get offended by these things, or is he just like? Oh, I, I think it's I think it's just more funny. <laughs> my my brother's becoming such a handyman though. So I think next year, watch next something year. I never would have Dude, expected out of him. Hey, man, it's crazy. It's weird. It's weird. Like, yeah, he's like he builds things, which is you'll get there, too, though. Once you uh, have your own place, yeah. you know, like once you get like your own and then you realize how much it costs to have other people <laughs> do stuff for you, you figure yeah. out real quick how to do basic stuff and how to fix things. Yeah, I hope so. I feel like. I feel like I'm getting close to that. Some of your videos that you that you show, you show me, I'm watching like building stuff too now. Um, I uh, when we when we first started this podcast, I don't know if we mentioned it, but I had uh, Mike sit down and watch like a two hour video <laughs> of a dude doing like bushcraft, like he was building a log cabin Ooh. using only hand tools. And it was amazing. Like this dude was just like he built the sickest cabin using like a hatchet and like some just a bunch of random hand tools. It's incredible. <clears throat> something that will he makes it look so easy, but something that we'll probably never accomplish in our lifetimes. So just just to have like a shed or something, but he built like a whole a whole little everything, outhouse, showers, everything. Um Okay, so let's so since we have like a bunch of questions to catch up on, so um, we've got questions to jump into now. Uh, there's a couple questions here where we kind of lost track of who sent them because mm -hmm. we compiled them and then we um, ran into some issues and had to recompile them. <laughs> so um, to start with, uh, I'd had somebody uh, actually our homie Jesse um, ask me. Um, if NBR, if No Bragging Rights, is a Christian band. Yeah, so NBR, No Bragging Rights, my band. Uh, it, we're not a Christian band. Um, I get that. I got, I've gotten, this is a question I've gotten kind of a lot uh, over the years. And we've had this conversation before, too. Yeah. Um, so the way I see it is just, uh, you know, I don't want No Bragging Rights to be anything, really. Um the only labels I want to give it now are just like, oh, like mental health advocacy or something like that, you know. Um, what about like Cool Guy Club? Cool Guy Club, you know. Uh, yeah, but no, we're we're not a Christian band because I, for me personally, I just feel like, uh, like faith to me is like a really big deal and it carries a lot of weight, and so I wouldn't want to call myself that, especially with like not all the members are or were at the time, you know, mm -hmm. and so. <clears throat> I just felt like it wasn't, I didn't feel like we carried enough, uh, like we didn't, we didn't earn that name or earn to, to, to carry that label and, and what goes with it. I have like a whole thing. Last time we talked about this, we went <laughs> for, a, it was like a long, long, uh, dive, but I won't go into it 
this time. Uh, but just basically, um, I just feel like, I just feel like there's a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of responsibility when you carry any kind of, any kind of title like that. And so I feel like for myself personally, like I write the lyrics, so I write from the lens of my life. So one of my things, I'm a, I'm a believer. And so, um, I just write how I write, but I don't, I haven't, I don't write to be like, to make the band anything. Right. Like I just write whatever the topic is and the, you know, anything in my life c- comes through with that, you know, some things I can pull from story wise, but I pull stories from everywhere. But, uh, yeah, no, we're not, we're not a Christian band. Um, I think there are very few Christian bands. I think when we had talked about it before, the analogy that I had used is like putting that label on it is kind of like, um, it, you know, in our scene, like being a straight edge band, yeah. right? Yeah, it's good. Um, it, even, even if, you know, like one member in your band happens to just break edge or somebody decides to, um, that, Hey, you know what, man, like I, I want to have a beer every now and then. Um, all of a sudden it's just like the, it's like the biggest, most blasphemous thing that you could ever do when you kind of pigeonhole yourself into that, um, in that label, in that title. Yeah. Well, you know? Cause it's, cause it's, cause it's important and it means a lot. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not like a, it's not like a game, you know? And there's, I, you know, I, I would have, there was a time back in like, I don't know, like 2010 or whatever, whenever like Christian core was like really big. Yeah. Like, yeah, it would have been cool to have like gotten some of that built in audience. Um, you know, because like if you would have put a lot of like my lyrics next to some of like the bands that were openly Christian, I don't think we're that far, you know, as far as like con- context and uh, content or whatever. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just think, I just think it's a, it's, it's a, like, any, like anything, if you're going to be labeled something, you should, it should, it comes with a lot of responsibility, I think. And, um, and so that, uh, you know, just based on the fact that not all members of our band, uh, are Christians, I just didn't, I didn't think it was a good, I never thought it'd be a good, a good, uh, like we'd be a good representation for that. Right. So, and I'm always like, I'm always the most disappointed when I, <laughs> I meet like most like Christian bands. There's very few bands that I think are like legit. And, uh, to, like the ones that I believe I thought were the most, they're not even bands anymore. So. I feel like as another thing too is like the most unfortunate thing to me is that same concept, edge bands, Christian bands, um, anybody that like puts that label on themselves, you're always going to find the ones that are doing it because they just want that fan base that will immediately jump on board because you're a Christian band or because you're an edge band or because you're, uh, you know, a, a crew affiliated band, whatever the case may be. Right. Like the second you put that title out, you're setting yourself up for, you know, that specific. And, and, and I feel like at that point, and this is just my personal opinion, like that's not genuine at that point. People don't love your music. They love the, your concept, right? you know? Um, yeah. I don't know. So yeah. So, <clears throat> so yeah, no brand. It's not a Christian band. So when you say you're walking on water, ice skating um okay so uh next question what is the best way to decompress um for me personally i think my decompressing uh usually i need decompressing from like so right now work right so uh what's nice for me is like that i'd live i have kind of a commute it's not too too terribly bad about half little over a half hour and so for me my my uh my drive is like the beginning of my decompressing and so i get to listen to music or usually like a podcast or something interesting on youtube to kind of get my mind um you know back into like or just basically out of work mode and um and uh i kind of i mean i like driving in general like um so I think just in that, just in gen, just that by itself, driving, listening to someone I enjoy, for me is a form of like self care and you know decompressing. And then uh, I don't know, I carry it further by either when I get home, I either I'll try to go like on like a little walk or something, or play with my dog. Um, 
my dog is like an instant like decompressor. He's he's uh he's fun. It's a good dog. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, if I can, I'll shower. That's usually pretty good for me. <laughs> like, that's... <clears throat> I like... It sounds so lame, but... I like the idea of, like, getting rid of the day. Or getting rid of whatever that was. Like, that's what showers are for me. It's like, I'm <laughs> I'm getting rid of... You're, you're cleaning off the funk. The funk of the day. And so... Yeah, so decompressing, I think, yeah, for me. It starts with driving. And then just trying to find... Uh, like things help me decompress, uh, music, uh, watching a movie or a show I enjoy, or listening to a podcast I enjoy. Um, you know, uh, something that's nice has been meeting up with you, Martin. That's been like a nice little decompressing. Uh, we've been meeting like every, pretty much every Saturday, I feel like now. And uh, it's just been nice to kind of just like get a lot, <laughs> we get a lot out. Yeah, it's all like we have like these weekend morning therapy sessions now at, yeah. at the coffee shop, <laughs> uh, where we get to we get to be men, be men <laughs> talk about our feelings. We get to be men and we get to talk about our emotions. We get to talk about how cool Martin's life is. I know, my goodness, dude. Yeah, we'll, just, Martin, he's... we'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, decompressing is like it's kind of like really simple. I, I just, um, I really just come home and just start like doing something with my hands, like whether it's working on a bike, working on woodworking shit in the garage, whether it's fixing something, you know, the case may be like, I just, I feel like I, like I'm at peace if I'm like turning a wrench or like, you know, like simple things doing an oil change on a motorcycle stuff like that the like, first two episodes have the table that we're at and mike built that yeah i built, that, built table. that table it's not the straightest table uh it's not the, the best table but i made it with my own two hands it's kind of cool it's sturdy i also built the, the door out there yeah which i don't think anyone can see yeah no, well, you could see it in the first two episodes. The, the big wooden sliding door. The big uh, barn door. I built that. Um, yeah, it's kind of cool. So hands on. <clears throat> um, okay. If you could go back and give your teenage you some advice, what would you tell them? Oh, man. This, this one gave me a hard time. This one gave you a hard time. This one kind of gave me a hard time too because um, my teenage self wouldn't have listened to me. I know. You know, like if I'm being completely honest, like I could go back and tell teenage me, like, hey, dude, like you're going to do some cool stuff, <laughs> but it's not going to turn out the way you thought it would. I still, I wouldn't have listened. I'd be like, no, no way, man. Yeah. I'd been like, I'm sure like 16 year old me would have been like, are you still in a band? <laughs> yeah yeah we are yeah you know technically we're still yes we're still a band um <clears throat> is, it, is it punk well <laughs> <laughs> it started there yeah it we started there effects of it still in our heart in our heart we're still very punk rock well you are you are in a punk band oh that's right yeah yeah oh yeah i think it, so you could tell your teenage self yes yeah which is which which is insane because like i'm getting close to 40 and when I say like sixteen year old me, like that's still no bragging rights. That's still that's still no bragging rights. Yeah, <laughs> no bragging rights. <laughs> uh, uh, a lot of people don't realize that no bragging rights was legit a product of the nineties. No bragging rights was formed in was it ninety nine? Ninety nine. Nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. And it was a punk band. And I think you've I don't know if you mentioned it on here or not, but you. You even have said that you should have changed the name when you switched the sound. Yeah, when uh, when Christian and Martin joined the band in two thousand like five ish, uh, and that was kind of when Ryan Sievers, our last original member, aside from myself, uh, left. That's when like we should have just changed the name. And you know, as, and when I think about it, I feel like Christian even said that like just change the name, and I think it was I think it was Michael <clears throat> Mass that was like no, let's keep it. It's it's crazy that like. You know, Martin and I have been friends for a, a very long time. I've been friends with you longer. 
but I didn't realize it wasn't that much longer. I didn't realize it was that much of a difference because I didn't realize that he joined the band like right in 05. Yeah. And that's when I came to La Sierra. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, crazy. So, <clears throat> and then I don't know if you knew this, when I, when Martin and I became really close friends was when you were working at Starbucks in Harupa. Um, I was living on Mike Miller's floor because I had just moved back from LA and I needed a place to stay. I didn't want to go back to live with family. So I just crashed on his floor and I didn't want to be at the house all the time because like I was just with his family. (laughs) So I would just go and hang out at the Starbucks where you were working at. And Martin just happened to be there also all the time every night because he didn't want to be home. And that's how we became friends. That, well, that, like that's how we became close friends, because we knew each other before that, but we never had like, like true story. I almost broke Martin or Martin's fingers, <laughs> one of the first times we ever hung out, because the 2005's graduation party at John's house, oh, nice. and he had that driveway that went uphill, so we loaded all the gear into the truck. Martin closed the truck bed and was like. All right, we're good to go. And I took off in the truck and all the cabs flew back and smashed his hands <laughs> on the truck. And I was like, I broke no bragging rights. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> yeah. And that was the first. Uh, what was the name of that band? Declare Your War. That was Declare the first War. Declare Your War show. Damn. Choker? No, at John's house. Oh, at, the, at his house? Yeah. The first time we ever played, we played at that little house party for graduation crazy and then after that is when we started like actually playing shows at like chain showcase stuff like that so yeah yeah so yeah so we're old we're old the music long time um uh, so it was a question what would we tell our old self or young what would you tell your teenage self if you could oh i would just okay so I i would just tell him that you can do your identity doesn't have to be tied to one thing. Like it's okay to do other things. Yeah. Like, um, if I was depending on like, let's just say if it was like 16 year old me, I would tell myself like, you can play baseball and still be like punk rock. Yeah. Like you can do both. Um, like you can get, you can do well in school, (laughs) like, or you can do better in school. Like, you know, I don't know. I don't think I could have ever convinced myself, my young self, to go to college, or at least do co- take college more seriously. I don't. I don't know how. I don't know how I could motivate myself back then. I think I just had to like keep, you know, do all the dumb things I did. But um, yeah, I think I just tell myself like you can be, you can be more than just like a guy in a band. Um, yeah. Like you, you have other interests. <clears throat> like, it's okay to like, it's okay. You know, even back then, I liked, you know, I liked a lot of, like, R&B and stuff like that. And I feel like I really limited myself to, like, what I, like, allowed myself to, like, listen to, especially around other people. Yeah. I was, like, too, like, punk rock for my own good. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I would just tell myself, that, like, you don't have to be tied to just one, like, one thing. Like, you can be many things. I feel like that'd be pretty close to me too i think i would also tell myself like hey like you're there's there's a lot cooler aspects of yourself than just trying to play music and be in a band right that's a cool way to put it like there's a lot there's a lot more that like you know, there's a lot more you're interested in that you're not allowing yourself, same, same concept of you, that you're not allowing yourself to be interested in, you know? Um, and then also, like, <clears throat> I would have checked my younger self's ego, like, really quick, because I had this, this, you know, fake it to make it mentality, and that just led to, like, this really just bad, like, case of, like, no, no, fuck that I'm the shit you know what I mean like and um it's it's one of those things that like you know as you experience it and as you're going through it like it's the idea of like no man I got this I got this all figured out and then it and then when you when nobody checks you on it and you don't check yourself on it it's really humbling when it like (laughs) when it finally hits you like you know um 
but yeah, like I, you know, I feel like I give myself younger self all this advice, but like me as a kid, I wouldn't have listened, you know? Yeah. I just wouldn't have paid it. I'd have been like, yeah, whatever, dude. Lose some weight, old man. <laughs> <laughs> so. It's called a push up. Yeah. It's called a push up. Man. Hey, maybe you should uh, run some laps, you know? Maybe, maybe Coach Mike was right. You should do suicides. <laughs> But anyone doesn't know, I used to coach Mike in baseball. Yeah, that's actually how we met. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I think we got through that one. All right. <clears throat> and then uh, this one, I believe this came from from our our boy Joe. Uh, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Oh yeah, that's a really good question. That's a good question. I think. Um, I think I would do, I think like something like podcasting. If I knew like, oh, I could just invest everything all my time and just do this because this would be fun. I like the idea of being able to talk and help in this way. Um, but uh, obviously there's a lot of like, we have lives that we have. <laughs> <laughs> but in this scenario, you can't fail. If I can't fail, then yeah, I'd probably do podcasting. I would go all in on my fantasy factory scenario where it's like warehouse, warehouse, studio space, but also have like an area to build motorcycles and cars and stuff. Then also just have all like kind of all the things that I like to do all under one roof. Yeah. That's not my house. <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah, I, I would go all in on that, on that concept. <clears throat> Man, I think I'm trying to think about this. I'm now thinking like other stuff. Another thing I, I would probably do if I knew I couldn't fail is just like a lot of like the um the extreme you know, sports stuff. Like I'd probably like I'd do like wild like I'm gonna base jump off of a off of a uh off of like the the highest building in Vegas, you know, like who was it? Who was it? Who who was it that did that? I think it was like Travis Pastrana or somebody that did that. Probably. And they went up to one of the like sky clubs in Vegas and then just straight up like base jumped off of the <laughs> like uh, stuff like that. Um, Wait, are, are you like if you had like if if money was an obstacle or whatever, you just could? Would you do like stuff like that? Like sky absolutely. Dive and all that stuff? Really? Absolutely, hundred percent. It's it's always been one of those things where like I've I've always wanted to go skydiving. Um, one, and, and this is something that later on in life, I'm like, I just need to do all this stuff alone. I can never find somebody to go with me. Right. I'm uh, not that person. <laughs> um, have you ever been like indoor skydiving? Like with the giant fan? No, I'll do that. Suit? I'll do that. Let's go do that. We'll film it for this. Oh yeah. We'll bring the cameras. Yeah. I'll totally There's one in Ontario. Really? Yeah. It's uh, called I fly. It's like right by the mills. First off, I just think it's hilarious that you have to pay money. This guy does. <laughs> and it's expensive. It's not cheap. It's like a hundred something dollars. I know. I think for it's the ridiculous. most basic package. Like when I, whenever, cause it's like, you know, like sometimes people like, <clears throat> ask me about it. I'm like, mm. and then I remember like, dude, that costs money, right? They're like, yeah, it costs money. You just like, <laughs> yeah, get on like, a plane for no mean? reason. I'm like, dude, I cannot jump out of a plane. True story. One of Dallas's biggest flexes for a long time was that, um, because he had never flown on a plane the only time he had flown on a plane was to go skydiving. So he's like, I've taken off in a plane, but I've never landed. Dang. <laughs> and I was like, hey, man, that's, that's kind of cool. But then, you know, he finally took a flight somewhere. That's cool. Um, all right, cool. Let's jump into some other questions. <laughs> uh, so this one is from Michael. This one's on the gram. <clears throat> I'd like to ask a question for the podcast. What made you want to write the lyrics for the song Blind Faith? When I listen to that song, it hits a lot in my past life. Mm. So I, I have I have a vivid memory of writing this when I was... Uh, so at the time, my girlfriend was going to community college out in Orange County. And I remember uh, while she was in one of her classes or while she was registering, doing something, she was doing something. And so I went with her. And so... Um, I was just like, I'm just going to hang out in the library just while you go, while you do stuff, whatever. 
And I remember I was in there and I remember thinking like, oh, it's quiet. Like I'm going to write in here. And I remember I, I wrote, uh, I was writing blind faith. And one of the things that, um, for me writing it was just the idea of like, um, we like when you tour so much <clears throat> and, uh, I just knew that there's like, like, it's really hard. Like it's almost like so selfish when you think about like touring and like how like we had a lot of, we had people that obviously care about us when we leave. Right. And so, you know, I had my family and at the time I had my girlfriend and, uh, and there's like a lot of trust and a lot of like uncertainty when you leave. Right. You know? And like, <laughs> for anyone who knows anything about no brand, it's like early history in touring. Like we had a hard time getting booked. So we would book and really like we, we'd book, tours in the winter because a lot of bands don't travel in the winter so we felt like we had to because because it's easier for you guys to get on to shows Mm -hmm. and stuff because yeah yeah play or play like you know in the summer hit up all the super hot spots um but uh fun fact what a lot of you guys don't know also is that no bragging rights uh followed warp tour and the way that they got by was selling water bottles yeah that was the hustle just to get exposure and to get their name out there. Yeah. We'd hustle water just to pay off gas. And then we'd also be hustling our CDs and stuff. So, but, um, so yeah, so, so blind faith, it's just the idea of like, uh, <clears throat> of, you know, leaving and, uh, and, uh, you know, basically the world still going on without you. And, uh, and, just kind of like a like a you know very dramatic dramatic and morbid thought of like you know if anything were to happen to us on tour um that i wouldn't want anyone to feel too sad about it because it's like we would have gone out doing what we loved and um and so it's like it's just the idea also of like um you know it's like writing like uh trying to think of my trying to think of the lyrics to that song now um just the idea of like, you know, yeah, you, you leave so much and it's almost like you're dead to a lot of people. And, uh, the sun rises and sets without me. I hope I never leave your thoughts. Do you still hold on to my picture? Does life go on without me there? So yeah, that's you love it. a ghost. You love a man you cannot see. You sleep alone. And when you wake up, it was just a dream. Thank you so much for your faith in me. This is, this is how I wanted to go out. So yeah, it's just the idea of like being gone. And then if something were to happen, like, don't feel bad. Cause like, this is, I'm doing, I'm not doing what I love. And so, <clears throat> true love never dies. <laughs> that one, yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, that's just. I think that's the gist of it. So, right. I am. I am pulling up. Uh, pulling up some of the questions. Um, sorry, I'm trying to organize all of this. I also remember working on that chorus, at least to make it catchy with Rick at his house. All of Illuminator, Rick and I would just like work on choruses just to try to make them catchy. I never really done that before. And uh yeah, Rick and, and I just like mess with melodies. Rick was the go to guy for for uh the kind of radio friendly catchiness. Yeah. You know. His, his favorite band still, like, still to this day, is Until uh, the day <laughs> Story I Story die. of the Year. And so, <clears throat> I don't know. Now he does a lot of, uh, he did our logo for, for this. Shout out Handsome Rick. Handsome Rick. Um, <clears throat> okay. From Ash, Ash B. Rouse. Mm-hmm. What makes a good friend, and how do you know when to let somebody go? Oof. <clears throat> um what makes a good friend i think what makes a good friend is just someone that understands you because i think we put a lot into like someone who's like oh well they're always there or this and that it's like well there's different ways to be there for people and i feel like everyone's different um i just think a friend that understands you to be like when to give you space when to yeah. reach out when to just be like no they're fine um and uh yeah, like someone that's, I don't know, that like, you don't have to like explain everything. <laughs> you have to explain <laughs> yourself too. Uh, 
and then when to let someone go i think it's just when you feel like you're just you're you're either pouring a lot into somebody and you're not getting anything back or or you feel like um or you just feel like uh i think anytime um there's like a power or like uh or like control at any anything I've been I've been seeing not in my not anymore I don't feel but I feel like there was a time when I felt like I just felt like there's people that kind of had a weird hold on me, um, but I think I think uh, letting someone go if if uh, I guess kind of what I said before like if if you feel like they're like manip- not mani- yeah like kind of like manipulating you or making you feel guilty for they're gaslighting you yeah yeah like you shouldn't have to feel guilty for like for being yourself or be or things about yourself like your friend anyone anyone in your life shouldn't make you feel uh bad for like things that are you um obviously if there's like if you have like a bad if there's something that you should get called out on that's one thing and a good friend will call you out on something but uh to get called out on something that's just like that's just like you, like inherited, inherited, uh, inherently you. Right. I think that's a bad thing. I think that there's, <clears throat> there's something to be said too about, um, <clears throat> about like effort and friendships, you know, like I think that, um, if you're the one who is constantly trying to reach out to somebody, um, checking in on somebody, you know, um, or, or the one that's, you know, always the one starting up conversations you're always the one trying to reach out you're always the one trying to hang out at some point you know just for your own well-being and your own like mental health you have to just step back and just say like look like you know i as much as you want to be in somebody's life if they're not reciprocating that or they're not you know showing you that same energy or giving you that same energy or giving you that same love like sometimes you know it's best to just take a step back and one of two things is going to happen either one they're going to go oh shit like this is was a constant in my life and i took it for granted and they're going to reach back out to you and that's Mm -hmm. how you know or they're just going to go like all right whatever you know that's that's another thing i think that's good too like give people an opportunity you know yeah i we I have a friend of ours who um, I won't name, but they're very quick to just be like, all right, fine. Fuck that guy. Like just Im- immediately just, all right. You, oh, you, they didn't. Oh, all right. Then fuck that guy. Like it's, it's so easy to just dismiss people. And it's so easy to just be like, all right, cool. Like I don't, you know, I don't care. They're out. But at the same time, if you have that mentality and you have that, like, you know, pro- thought process, it's not going to be beneficial for you in the long run because you're going to end up completely alone. Yeah. You know, and, you know, like what you said, like giving somebody a chance, like I've done it. I've, I've been a shitty friend. I've completely, I, I mean, for years, I just kind of disappeared and I only talked to like five people because I just had a lot that I had to figure out and I had a lot that I had to work out on my own. And, you know, in that process, like I kind of burned some bridges. I stopped talking to a lot of people and some of them have come back around and I've talked to them and kind of explained my side of things and my situation. Others are, they're just, I, we, I, we've never spoken again, you know, and that's, you know, it comes with the territory, but I think that the people that are supposed to be in your life and the people that are meant to be in your life will be in your life, you know, um, real genuine friends are people that you know you can go and not talk to for a few months and then when you pick back up it's like nothing ever happened right you know um and i think that there was a lot to be said about that like with our friendship with my friendship with martin you know when you're when you're dealing with people that are constantly traveling and on the road and stuff like that you go six months without seeing each other ever sometimes you the conversations are like very limited or few and far between like oh what's up dude hope everything's well and then when you get back you're just like okay cool it's like you're never we're never gone you know so i think that like 
it's hard to define a real friend. It's more of something that you kind of feel and it sounds cheesy, but it's something that you just know, like, you know, you know, if something's genuine, you know, if a relationship, friendship, whatever the case may be is, is real, right. you know, and you don't take things personally. I think it's another thing too. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Ash had another question. Where did the name Walking Blind come from? Walking Blind came from our new song, our new single. Well, I guess it's not new anymore. Uh, for new bragging rights song, uh, Walking Blind. It's off of our EP. Um, we were just kind of throwing names out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one, day, one day. And uh, I think you're the one who was like, she Walking Blind. It felt fitting. Yeah. So, yeah. No bragging right to EP. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see here. I think we got a couple questions in the emails. I'll jump over to there. <clears throat> we had an email from Kevin. Um, I'm going to read this out. It's a little bit longer. Um, <clears throat> hey, friends. What's up, dude? My name is Kevin. Hope you guys are doing well. First of all, I just wanted to thank you a lot for talking about mental health in your podcast. Thank you for breaking the stigma. I'll try to keep it short. Uh, I got depression and panic attacks about a year and a half ago. Um, I got to the point where I couldn't get out of bed anymore. With all of this, a lot of anxieties and suicidal thoughts came up for such a long time. Still struggling with depression and anxieties a lot, but it got better. It took a lot of time, but I'm still here, which... Awesome. Awesome. I just wanted to say um, it will get better. I didn't believe that for a long time, even if I got professional help and therapy. And sometimes I don't believe it now. I'm able to go to a store again without a panic attack, able to cook food for myself. <clears throat> In my worst times where I didn't know what to do, my girlfriend gave me a book called Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt Haig. I've never read this book, but I, I want to pick it up. I think this book saved my life somehow, and I felt so understood. And I really hated to read. <laughs> <laughs> Good book, man. <clears throat> but I think I got really lucky that I opened up and had people around me that were so understanding and tried their best to help. But it was and is really tough for them, too. I think sometimes we talk, we talk a lot about people like me with depression and forget the people around us as they're often struggling, too. Please don't get me wrong. I think we have to talk much more about this sickness to break the stigma. So my question is, do you have any advice for people that are trying to help someone with depression? Because I remembered that I, a lot of times, didn't know what to say or to do, and I can now imagine how hard this must be for the people around you. Again, thanks for sharing your stories, and thanks for your podcast. Maybe you'd like to answer this. If not, it's totally fine. Much love. All the best from Germany, Thank Kevin. You. And then it says, um, I'm assuming it says sent from iPhone, but in German. So if I butcher this, von von meinem iPhone gesendet, nailed it, nailed it, <laughs> nailed it. Germany, here we come. <laughs> um, well, thank you for sending that in, Kevin. Um, you know, again, it's awesome when you're able to share that and be open with it, and that you're including people in your life. And it, it's hard. It is. It's difficult when someone comes and shares that with you, and you know. This was this was this was my life. This was the hardest part for me when I started to want to understand mental health and try to be there for people. And so uh one of the things you know, my my best advice for anyone how to be there for someone is just uh is just listen, listen to them, you know. And uh if they don't feel like talking, that's fine. Find uh you know, doesn't you don't have to talk about the actual you know what you know, what they're feeling if they're not if they don't know because a lot of times too people don't know how to articulate how they're feeling and so i think a lot of good could just be done is just by being you know you know whatever if whatever your friendship is with them and just talk you know um because a lot of times if you're just you know in chatting maybe something will come up or something will get triggered in a good way that can start a conversation or you know um but I think the the best yeah the best way to be be there for someone is just to just to listen to them let them know that you're that you're there, whether you know how to help them or not, um, 
you know, and don't feel like you have to give advice. That's the other thing too. Like, don't feel like, cause that, that used to drive me nuts. I was like, oh man, I want to, I want to just say, I want to say something. Want to say them. the right thing. Yeah, and then they're gonna go on, and it's gonna fix their day. <clears throat> but it's just not. That's just not how it works, you know. A lot of times, and so you know, just be okay with like, you know, letting someone know and being honest, you know, especially, um, you know, like, even now, from I still hear, th- I still hear things, and I'm like. I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, or I don't know what to say right now. And so sometimes I'll just tell them, I'm like, I'm like, dude, like, thank you for sharing that. Like, that sounds, it does sound tough. Like what you're going through or that sounds, you know, like, um, how can I, is there anything I can help you with? Like, is there any questions? Like you're trying to want to, you know, and, and kind of like almost treat it, like make it like something that you're, that you're willing to do with somebody. Like, let me, like, can I help you? Like, let's try to find these questions or let's try to answer these questions together or let's try to like, you know, or let's try to figure out what, you know, uh, anything or, 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 um, you know, think of a, a ways to develop, um, like a ways to like develop, develop like a plan or something with them or let them know like, Hey, you know, I just want you to know that, uh, you can come to me for anything. And if you feel like you're getting low, like you can call me. You know, and like, you can have like a code word if you want to let them know like, hey, this is like that time, you know, whatever it is, just so they know like, oh, okay, this is, I know why you're calling me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think just listening is the biggest thing. And then, uh, you know, just, you don't have to have answers, I guess. Is yeah. The big thing. I, th- I think the biggest thing is that you... Like you said, you don't have to have answers, and and also you don't have to um, <clears throat> you don't have to have a solution right, right away. Yeah. You know, you don't have to um, give them, you know, whoever whoever's going through whatever they're going through. You don't have to give them the end all be all answer at that point in time. You know, um, it it really boils down to like a lot of times especially with me, like when I've been at low points and I've been, you know, depressed or like, I've always, to me, I've always just wanted to be the person that helped. And I never liked getting help. I never liked, you know, talking about what was going on with me. I never liked talking. So I would just like, I would just bottle it up and then eventually it would go away. That was what I thought. And that wasn't true. It would just eventually you know, boil over. Um, but you know, as far as being there for somebody, like you don't have to, sometimes all they want is someone to vent to and they want somebody to just hear what they're going through. And sometimes all they want is, you know, validation that like, Hey, this is what's happening to me and this is what's going on. Other times it's just they need to get it off their chest, whatever the case may be. Um, so I guess the biggest thing, and and I think the best piece of advice I can give is just try your best to be patient yeah. because you're going to hear the same thing a lot. You're going to hear it over and over and over again because – a lot of times when you're dealing with depression, you're de- dealing with suicidal thoughts. This isn't just like a one-time thing. Right. It's not something that just happens once and then you get over it. This is something that is, you know, a continual feeling and emotion. Um, <clears throat> you know, and I have this bad, I have this, I don't know if it's a, it's not a bad quality, but it gets me in trouble where I want to save people. Right. Yeah. You know, and and sometimes it's to a point where it's like almost detrimental to myself. Yeah. Because then I'm thinking like, oh, what can I what can I do to help this person? You know. Um. So yeah, I guess the the big thing is just be patient and and be as helpful as you can be without it being detrimental to yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's, and it's okay to say that you don't have the answers. It's okay to admit that you don't have the answers. 
Um, but, you know, offer the option that you'll find the answers together. Yeah. Because that helps a lot. Yeah. It, I, dude, just, re- just, just recently I had a friend that lost their, lost a parent uh, on Christmas Eve. And so, like, I was just, you know, there's nothing, nothing I can say. Nothing I can say comforting, yeah. really. Like, and so I just, you know, try, just try to be there for her and just let her know, like, hey, like, you know, this is not supposed to happen, you know. Uh, but at least she was around family and stuff. So I was like, lean on family. Like, lean on family right now. Like, that's probably the best things you can do. Because for me, especially at that time, like, there's nothing I'm going to say that's going to help in that moment. My my dad was just telling me a story about one of the one of the people that worked for him, one of his employees. Um, I guess her sister's family. I'm just gonna give the gist of the story because I don't know all the full details, but I guess her sister's family. Um, they were asleep and there was a fire in the house. Fire. Nobody woke up for it. Nobody heard the smoke alarms, anything, and the fire engulfed the house. Um, the The husband, I believe the husband and the kids died in the fire. And then his employee's sister was like on, was in the ICU critical condition <clears throat> and died right before the holiday yeah. as well. So he was telling me the story and I'm like, what? How do you recover from something like that? You know, how do you, and, and especially like, let's say his, her sister had survived through that. Mm-hmm. The the trauma of being in a house fire, being burned, and then losing your whole family, you know. Um, and I go, what did you, what do you say? He goes, I can say anything. I'm just, I'm, you know, all I can say is I'm sorry. And if there's anything I can do for you, you know, let me know. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's yeah. sometimes, I mean, there, there's going to be plenty of times when you just don't have the answer and all you can do is just be as supportive as you can. Um, yeah. Even just literally just being there. And, and it's definitely, you know, like, um, like he was saying in his email, like he's he's been at that point where he was low and he was dealing with all this. And then you realize afterwards that the people around you are probably suffering as well because they're seeing you go through it. Yeah. Um, yeah and that's valid, you know, but um, I guess in that type of scenario, just be cognizant of the fact that they were there for you and return the favor you know, be there for them as well. I know it's not easy when you're going through it, but, um, you know, you know, so I'm I'm thinking like remembering, uh, when I lost my grandmother's like years ago, but at the time that was like the biggest loss of my life. And I remember telling, uh, like when it happened, I like told, like I, you know, started letting friends know, let Ryan Stevers know. And, uh, and so I told him, and then him and Alex were like, "Hey, we're gonna come get you." And I was like, "I don't, I'm, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to do anything." They're like, "We're, we're gonna, we're gonna come, we're gonna come see you, we're gonna, we're gonna come get you." And I remember thinking, like, "Well, I don't want to, I don't want to go anywhere. Like, I want to just be here with my family." And so they came and they picked me up, and uh, I don't actually, I don't even know. I should, and I never, never asked them this. I wonder if they had talked to like my family and my family had said something. But they, they were like, uh, we're going to go to El Torito. I was like, I don't feel like eating. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to do, I kind of want to do this. And like, let's, let's, we're going to go out, we're, we're going to go to El Torito. You're going to have to eat. And so they knew that I hadn't been eating. They knew like no one in our family really had been eating. So they knew I wasn't. Right. And, and, uh, and so they took me to El Torito and we just sat there for like, I don't know, an hour. And I really didn't say a whole lot. And I remember finally, like, eventually we started talking. I started feeling better. And I ended up ordering food. I remember e- eating. And it was just nice just to be with them. Like, cause I remember, I remember <clears throat> like, for a while, I don't even think we said a whole lot. Yeah. You know. 
I think it was more just that in the mask me like how my family was doing or, you know, and I just remember appreciating that. The, oh my God. I remember just appreciating, uh, after the fact that they, they still came and they were like, they just knew that I needed to be with them, you yeah. know, like I needed to be with them and like, and that eventually I needed to eat cause I hadn't eaten. But, um, so yeah, so someone I just being with someone, you know, um, yeah. Hey, what's next? What's the next question? <laughs> <laughs> so we got we got Uno Mas, Uno Mas. One more question for this week, and this one I saved for the end because I feel like we could both talk quite a bit about this. Mm-hmm. This one comes from Jay Mac, and um, the question was: What's a good way to move forward from a girl you really fell for, slash dealing with the emotions that come with that? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Well, I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, I, you know, like this is, it's tough because you're going to hear a lot of the same advice. You're going to hear a lot of differing mentalities. Um, so, and I, and, and this is something that I, tru- I, I like really truly believe that um, for the most part, and I'm speaking very generally the dude way to approach this is like, I'm going to just start sleeping with other girls and eventually I'll get over it. Right. Um, and typically, um, typically when it comes to the female side of things, from what I've seen, I'm trying to like play this very, (laughs) very like, uh, politically correct here. Um, from what I've seen, the mentality is deal with the emotions before you move on, right? Now, not to say that that doesn't happen on either side or whatever the case may be, but generally that's like the idea and mindset. And I really think that coming to terms with your emotions first is the right way to do it. Um, I think the biggest thing, you know, because we've, we've all been there, I've definitely been in a scenario where I thought, Hey, this is like my soulmate. Like this is the, the, this is my best friend in the world. This is the person that like, I want to spend the rest of my life with. This is the person that I want to be with. And it didn't happen. It just didn't work out that way. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think the biggest thing to move forward from that is you have to accept that it's done you have to accept that it's not going to work and you have to come to terms with the fact that like this picture that you created in your head and this like, you know, this, like I, I'm, I'm that like hopeless romantic dude. That's like, Hey, what's up? Like, it's nice to meet you. You know, cool. All right. I've plotted out our whole life. It's cool. (laughs) We're going to get married you know, whatever. Like, you know, I got like, I've, I've thought about all that. Like when I, especially now, now that I'm older, when I'm dating, like, I definitely go into situations more thinking like, you know, what's is like, I'll know right away. Like, is this short term? Is this long term? Like, could it be whatever the case may be? Right. But that's just my side of things. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not the other person's side of things. So you have to kind of break the quote unquote fantasy of what you had planned or what your thoughts were or what your emotions were for this person that you really, really fell for in order to move forward because if you cling on to the fact of like oh man she was the one and and i'm never going to meet anybody like her or vice versa I'm never going to meet anybody like him then you, then you're right you're not going to because you're always going to you, you're always going to be holding them at this pedestal level you know um and it's not easy to just move on it's not easy to let go especially when you know, when you deal with things like that, you deal with relationships like that, that they're not only like the person that you're attracted to, you spend most of your time with, but they become like your best friend. And then so at that point, you're not only losing a romantic partner, you're losing the one of the closest people to you. Yeah. you know? um, okay, so the question is, how do you move on from someone that you like in love with, basically? Yeah. How do you... How do you move forward from somebody that you really felt for and dealing with the emotions that come with that? Um, so is this like, is this coming from like a, like someone that you were with and like you're no longer together or someone that like you like, and then like, 
You know what I mean? Like shoot your shot, and then it didn't work out. You know what I mean? I I don't know. I'm reading. We have to ask Jay Mac. <laughs> um, I I'm looking at it like this is somebody that you were with. Okay. Right? Uh, I I guess I guess there's there's validity to like falling pretty hard for somebody really quick without it even being a thing. I've been yeah. there too. I think one of the best ways to move on is uh, a couple of things. So one, uh, if you really care for that person, you don't you don't really stop caring for them, right? And so, um, I think that makes it hard at first, makes it very hard at first. But I think if you care for someone uh, as much as you know you, you know, it, to say like you love them and and whatnot, then you you want the best for them. And so, if that's not you, then you need to be okay with that. As hard as that is, right. And I think something that's kind of helpful in like in the healing process is uh, this is like my advice to anyone who like breaks up with somebody or like if they, you know, or if they're like into someone and then it's just not, it's just not going to happen. Uh, I just say one of my, my advice is, you know, so what do you like about that person? You know, and kind of like figure out like the things that you liked you know, because maybe I feel like in any relationship, there's a lot of good we can take, you know, and then there's also a lot of stuff we can take, you know, and be like, oh, that's not maybe I don't like that quality in this person. And it's like something you can look forward to or something you, look, something you can look for in someone else later down the line. Yeah. Um. And so, yeah, so I think uh, maybe like take inventory of what the relationship was, the good and the bad. And then, uh, I think really try to be happy for them or try to like, like if you want to, if, if, uh, especially if you stay friends, I, I'd, I'd hope you stay friends. If you love somebody, I'd hope you stay friends with them. But, um, yeah, I think you just gotta, yeah, like almost like still be their biggest fan, be their biggest supporter. Uh, things shouldn't change as far as like how you treated them. Uh, if you need time to step away and like to mend, that's totally cool and, I, and probably very recommended to do. To step away, but like I think eventually, if they're your friend, you should still be their friend. You should still care, yeah, care for them and and what they're doing. Um, and I think you also have to accept that they're going to grieve this differently than you are. Mm -hmm. um, so you can't expect them to act the same way that you're acting, if that makes sense. Like you can't expect them to um, process and, and approach the emotions the exact same way you do because they're going to handle it in their own way. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in the case of like a breakup, whether, you know, like Mike said, <laughs> and Mike is the guy that's friends with all his exes pretty much, you know, <laughs> so... Um, Pretty much yeah. all my exes are married and have kids. Yeah. Sick. Hey, we're like the good luck Chucks, <laughs> you know? Um, but so there, there's there's validity to that. Like if, if that was your friend and that was your best friend for such a long time, yeah, take the space, take the time you need to heal and, and step away. And if you can continue to be friends with them after that, then like that's like the healthiest thing that you can do. But also be prepared for the fact that, like, even though you may be there, they may not be right. either. You know, um, they may they may be at a place where they're like, I just don't, I don't, I can't be friends with you. You know, yeah, which you gotta respect as well. <clears throat> and yeah, you just have to, you know. I think the biggest thing, I don't know, like the biggest thing I, I think, especially in for me, was is is accepting the fact that like you have to accept it before any of it will make sense and heal because the more time that you spend thinking about like the what ifs and the what could have beens is is less time that you're allowing yourself to move forward right yeah and especially like in a breakup i always tell people like dude let it suck as much as possible yeah like let it hurt as much as possible. Like let yourself feel everything. Get it out. Like cry. Yeah. Like do it. Go go through it so that you really truly experience it and you feel it. You know because I feel like 
especially if it's a relationship that's ending, you know, um, there's a lot of lessons to be learned there. And, uh, and so like, you know, whenever, like I always tell, tell friends like, yeah, dude, it's gonna, it sucks. Cause it's, it's your heart. <laughs> it's going to suck. Like you cared about them. So yeah, like you're, or you love them. This is going to, this is going to be rough for a while. This is going to take time. Yeah. And so I think, you know, I think, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I'm thinking with anything. You just, you, I feel like you, when you learn and you understand things, you can kind of prepare for the next, you know, for moving forward, for healing. Um, the other thing too, uh, which I think is really important is like to keep living your life as like as best you can. And I know it's hard because like when it happens, like you don't want to do anything. Um, you know, like that's normal. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You know, I, you, you lose the, yeah, there's just things you just don't want to do or there's songs that you hear and it's like, oh no, another song, whatever it is. Um, but I think, I think, um, I think it's good to keep like as best you can, even if you're faking it, like live your life, like, like get up tomorrow, do what you gotta do, you know, do something for yourself, you know, um, even if you feel sad, like do something for yourself, um, have yep. something to look forward to in your day. Go to El Torito and go to El Torito, eat, eat out your feelings. Um, <laughs> that's, good. Um, that's what got us here, Mike. I know, man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it so, it sounds cheesy as as fuck. Trust me, I know. But like that's that statement or that saying that you see like all over the gram and all over like the motivational posts and stuff, where it's like, if you love the wrong person that much, like imagine what it's gonna be like with the right person. But that, but I think that's real. I'm never heard of that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like it's like if you, <clears throat> if you love the wrong person that much, just imagine what it's gonna be like when you meet the right one. My mom used to say <clears throat> like, uh, you know, just imagine what you know God has for you. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't want to hear that right now. Yeah, I can't. I don't hear this right now. No. Da- dating is it's it's tough because um, the more you put yourself out there the more likely you are to get hurt but the more you put yourself out there the more likely you also are to meet somebody that clicks with you yeah you know um and i think that when you've figured out a good a good a good idea of what you're like you're looking for it makes it a little easier to spot yeah things that you're not looking for. <laughs> yeah Welcome to our world. <laughs> Spot red flags. It's, you know what's funny is I find like when I meet people, I kind of find like I put up my own like red flag. I'm like I'm a red flag. Like like when I hear how someone talk, I'm like, mm, you're not gonna. This isn't gonna be good for you. <laughs> like I have opinions that are you're gonna really not are really not gonna jive with you. <laughs> we're we're not gonna mesh very well here. Yeah. But anyways. <clears throat> well, man. I mean, I hope that you. Um, I, I hope that that whatever you're going through, um, that it's getting better, dude. Because yeah. it's it's tough. We've we've all been there. I was there, you know, n- and not even that long ago. And, and I I don't like when like people I get like I get this a lot, and every time I'm like, dude, like uh, people like especially guys, mostly guys, they're like, dude, I'm so, uh, I feel so lame, but I think I'm like my depression is based from a girl. Like I know it's so stupid. It's like why is that stupid? It's like it's your, you're in love, right? It's your heart. Like, why is that stupid? You know, and especially with like, or if I meet like someone who's younger and they'll tell me like, I know this is stupid. My first love, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, it's your first love. Like, this is your world right now. Like, what else do you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Especially if you're young, like that's their whole world. Yeah. That's everything right now. That's like yeah. the main focus of their life. So that's why it's devastating. And I think it sucks that we don't really do a better job as like, as, as, as being able to like help, help. Uh, like teens deal with that at that age, you know, like help them to, to deal with the breakup healthily, like, um, you know, and, uh, and not just like run from it or just be like, Oh, whatever. That didn't, that didn't hurt me. It's like, well, 
seemed like you would seemed like you liked her a lot yeah and so i don't know i always think it's i always feel like whenever people feel bad for like approaching me with like a relationship thing uh just because they're like i know it's, it's stupid i shouldn't it's like well no dude like this is like your work this is if this is your this is what's impacting you right now like then it's important and I think I think that from such a young age, like people are always so dismissive. Like people are really dismissive of young love, teen relationships, mm -hmm. even like dating in your early twenties. People are really dismissive of it. It's not until you get to like our age where people are like, "Hey, start taking this seriously." You know what I mean? <laughs> like, and I really think that at at that point, you know, like you kind of have to change the thinking of that because like everything that you're going through, like, yeah, you're going to go through some wild shit in your, you know, teens and your early twenties. Um, but all of that helps mold you yeah. to find what you're like truly looking for in a relationship. Right. Like I, you know, I've been there. I've felt the, like, I'm never going to meet anybody like her. I'm never going to, um, you know, experience this again. I'm never having a connection like this again. Um, you know, but then something comes along, you know, or somebody comes along and blows your mind and then the connection is different, but maybe it's better. You know, sometimes they're really toxic and sometimes it's worse. So here's something I wish I would have told myself when I was young, the whole thing going back is, uh, is to have fun in relationships. Yeah. Like I feel like I feel like for myself personally, how I used to date when I was young, I was like very serious, and also I was very, <laughs> I don't know, I was weird. I feel like I was very, uh, like I was like I don't know how to explain it. I, I just I I just felt like I was like too serious. Whereas, I think, like now and anything, like it should be fun. I was like one of the big things was like for Harry, I was like he's like asking about stuff. So I was like, dude, just have fun, man. Like yeah. just do fun shit, man. Go. Yeah. I don't know. Go, go do stuff. Try stuff. Up, try stuff together. You know, like I don't know. Just do. Just have fun. You go do cool stuff. Yeah. I think. Um, I think for me, I was. Um, I was very selfish when I was younger. Dating. Dude, same. Actually, that's a better word. I was very selfish. Too. Because, you know, it was the whole like mentality of like. Hey, I I play in a band. I tour. I've got things I want to do and things I need to do, and I'm not going to let anybody yeah. hold me back from that. You know, like, so there was always that. And then I, it was just the idea of like, no, there's stuff that I want to do, and I'm not going to let anybody take that away from me, you know? And then, they, like, you don't realize how much that can hurt the people around you yeah. or affect the people around you, you know? Um, yeah. Dating is definitely an interesting dynamic. Uh, yeah, if you want to talk more about this, meet us on Saturdays at a. Date. Yeah, you want to you want to talk more about love and emotions and advice. Saturday mornings at Daily Brew. <laughs> <laughs> um, which funny story? Uh, I don't know if you listen to this podcast, but um, somebody saw us. Well, we'll saw you guys. I just happened to be there. <laughs> saw you guys at Daily Brew and was like, oh crazy i thought i saw you guys at the coffee shop this morning but i wasn't sure if it was you and uh, i wanted to say hi but i didn't know if it was you guys or whatever she said hi she said hi <laughs> not to me you can say hi to me all you want and be like oh let's, let's talk to those guys well i think it's one of the funniest things i heard was uh i can't remember who it was one of our one of our friends a friend of a friend had messaged him saying like i think i saw mike Windbreaker and everything. <laughs> I think I saw Mike. He was wearing the windbreaker <laughs> and, the, and the hat. <laughs> That's awesome. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I think uh, I think we'll call it. This is a questions only episode. And then uh, when we come back next week, um, I really want to. There's some. We we could we could finally talk our our Spider Man talk. Gives enough time for people to see it. This is our last episode of 2021. Yeah. When we come back, it'll be 2022. Be a new year. New year, new me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So once again, guys, continue to send in your questions. I know that we got a little backlogged and got a little messy there, but we do love hearing 
you guys' questions, comments, concerns, whatever the case may There's be. The holidays, guys. Give us a break. Walkingblindpod at gmail.com. Uh, make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. Also, if you are um, checking us out on any of the podcast apps, please hit us with that five-star review. Um, that way we can get this in front of more people. We want to, you know, kind of get more consistent and get get more people listening. Um, yeah, we want to we want to reach out and hang out with uh, as many people as we possibly can. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, hit it with that five star review. Hit it with a comment like Mike sucks. Which one? I don't know. You guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. That being said, Happy New Year. Hope you guys had good holidays. See you guys soon. See you in 2022. Love you.